we're all about real world tests here guys we've got uh, snow everywhere and uh, just finished testing the low temperature charging protection and self-heating function of this Lee time 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery so if you want to see how this uh, performed in this test as well as a slew of others stay tuned here it comes let's unbox this so it's the little things that make it nice and uh, we've got this nice little pouch right here that contains all the documentation. Got two terminal screws and two terminal caps. And there's the battery. They packed it very, very well. Self-heating model. So be sure and uh, stick around because we're going to be putting that to the test. This is a nice touch. They've got a QR code that'll take you to installation videos. I also just love it when manufacturers put specs on the unit like this. You know what your max discharge current is. You know what your charging voltage needs to be. I just love that. This appears to just have like a catalog of uh, different products and what they have. The quick start guide, got a five year warranty available for this, which is great. Here's the actual manual. And look at this, we got uh, stickers. Very nice. I've tested one other heated battery and uh, this is very important. You need to be sure and have a charge current of at least 15 amps available when it's below freezing to be able to supply enough power for the heaters to function. It's rated uh, for 4,000 plus times of cycling. Continuous discharge and charge currents at 100 amps. We do have 500 amps available for one second. That's great surge. We'll be testing that. If the temperature is 14 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to take 30 to 60 minutes before the battery will start charging. It'll take that long for the battery heaters to warm it up. If it's negative four degrees Fahrenheit, it could take 70 to 100 minutes. The heaters uh, won't turn off until the battery's reached at least 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is kind of cool. It goes, uh, it shows a nice little diagram here of where the heating pads are located. One on the top and the bottom, and the BMS is on the side. How long will this Lee Time 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery Power, my full-size kitchen refrigerator. This is my main fridge that I use every day. We're getting in and out of it quite frequently. So this is a really good real world test. We will also be doing a capacity test. That's the Victron Smart Shunt right there. This capacity test will be less than a 0.2C rate uh, because of how low of a draw the fridge has on it. So it tends to skew the numbers on the capacity test to the lower side. But we're all about real world testing here on this channel, right? So why not see what the actual real world capacity is in a situation like this. I have this power station hooked up in the middle between the battery and the fridge for two reasons. Reason number one, I need an inverter to get the DC power to AC power and two, sometimes I'm not right here when the battery dies and uh, this can see the fridge through a few extra hours if I'm not uh, here right away. You can see the fridge pulls just over a hundred watts of power when it's running. So not too bad. You can see everything is zeroed out on the smart shunt here and it is 10.08 p.m. So let's see how long this runs. The fridge runtime test has concluded with this lead time battery. I'm late to the party. It's 9.45 p.m. This battery died uh, a little while ago. Based on when this power station said it stopped seeing power, it was about uh, 5 p.m. today. So that means that this battery just ran my full-size fridge for really close to 17 hours. It's pretty amazing. Now it is a little cooler. Winter time is here so uh, the house is a little cooler so we get uh, a little more run time uh, than when it's warmer but uh, nonetheless 17 hours is uh, a great uh, time for one of these batteries. In terms of the capacity test we got a full 100 amp hours. 1.3 kilowatt hours. So it uh, smashed the capacity test really well. And again, that is less than a 0.2C rate. So if uh, we were doing it at uh, a true 0.2C rate, uh, you would end up uh, probably going beyond the 100 amp hour mark. So good job, Lee Time. This 3000 watt inverter is incredibly heavy. So for this next test, we're gonna use extension cords. Question is, can this 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Lee Time power? Follow the extension cord. A 120 volt 
mini split heat pump. So you can see we've got snow on the ground, so today we're going to run it in heat mode. And it's off and away, piece of cake. Now this pulls the most from the amount of power right when it turns on. I've got the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up in the garage. So let's go see how much uh, power this is drawing on startup. There's the shunt right there. And uh, on startup, that uh, heat pump is pulling 580 watts. And uh, the current coming out of the battery is uh, just about 46 amps. It's estimating that that current draw, that uh, heat pump will last for just over two and a half hours. However, what uh, happens, and actually you can see it's happening now, See how, how it's dropping. We're down into the 400 watt range now, 38 amps. So what happens is that heat pump just kind of coasts. I generally see it just kind of coasting at like the 200 watt mark. Uh, with that being the case, you can easily get about four hours of runtime on that heat pump with a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And this 12 volt battery from Lee Time Power, follow the cord. A household microwave. Now this pulls just under 1800 watts of power. That translates to over 100 amps from this battery. It's always a toss up to know if this is going to run it for a full 30 seconds or if it's going to shut itself down for overcurrent protection. And uh, that's what we want to see. I have the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up right back here. And that way we can monitor what's happening with that battery. Three two, one. You can immediately see we jump up to 1800 right there, 1839, 153 amps discharging. Oh, and it shut down. Very nice. So now we'll see if it restarts itself. If it does, that inverter will start beeping as it uh, powers back up. That's good and bad news. Good news is it has a really good overcurrent protection system. Oh, and it restarted. So self restarts as well after an overcurrent event, which is great. So I, I like this test because it puts it just over the 100 amps continuous that these are rated for generally. And I like to see batteries that actually do shut down with that tight of a tolerance. That makes them extra safe. The negative, of course, is that a single one of these batteries is not going to run something like a microwave, like we were testing here. The good news is it has much tighter tolerance with the overcurrent and overcurrent protection, so you wouldn't, I wouldn't feel as big of a need to have separate fuse for this battery compared to others I've tested that did just go and go even over their rated output. Because then you start running the risk of heating up connections and wires and stuff and you really don't want that. So anyway, great job Lee Time on your overcurrent protection. Very impressive. In this 12 volt self-heated 100 amp hour battery from Lee Time Power, follow the cord. A whole home gas furnace. We are powering this via this easy generator transfer switch. It makes Powering critical 120 volt loads like a furnace that are hardwired a piece of cake during a grid down situation. It's literally as easy as plugging in an extension cord and flipping a switch. I've got a full dedicated video on the installation and function of this that I will link down in the description below. Once again, we have the Victron Smart Shunt so we can see how much power this furnace is going to pull. There's the hot surface igniter. And that's pulling just over a hundred and about 160 watts, 12 amps. Without the blower running and without that hot surface igniter, we're now just pulling 105 watts. Okay, the fan is now up to speed on this furnace. And we look at the uh, shunt app. We're pulling just about 475-ish watts. That's 37 amps out of the battery. And uh, it's estimating that uh, with nearly a full charge, we get about three hours of runtime. Now, the one thing to remember about furnaces is they cycle off and on. So you could get three hours straight of this running nonstop, but most of the time it's going to run for, you know, 15, 20 minutes maybe, and then shut off for 40 minutes or whatever. And then it'll turn back on 
So you're not going to be constantly running it those three hours straight unless your house has gotten really cold. So you could actually get substantially longer run time due to it cycling. We're gonna test the overcurrent protection on this one more time. I've got an electric hot plate right here. We've got the Victron Smart Shunt app open. There's the shunt right there. This should pull more than 100 amps from that battery and we should get a shutdown on it just like we did with the microwave. Let's see what happens. Hundred and thirty nine amps, sixteen hundred, almost seventeen hundred watts, and we just lost power. It just turned on automatically again. So no, this battery cannot run an electric hot plate, but it has very good overcurrent protection. So I think that's a fair exchange. In this twelve volt lead time battery power, follow the cord. A high end desktop gaming PC. We've got three four K monitors and uh, a 4K gaming benchmark running on that one right there. If we come down here, this uh, black cord comes and uh, plugs into this UPS, which by the way is pretty epic. It's made by Golden Mate and it has lithium iron phosphate batteries in it. Highly recommend. You can see here, it's saying that we're pulling almost 600 watts. With the inverter overhead, we're probably pulling over 600 watts from the battery itself. Here's the smart shunt reading. Yeah, you can see from the battery, we are pulling about 650 watts. So at a 97% state of charge, it's estimating that uh, we'd be able to run this computer at this load for about an hour and a half. 4K gaming is really heavy. I don't know if you can hear, but the fans uh, and the computer are really going like crazy because it's overclocked. So rarely is someone going to be pushing a PC this hard. More everyday tasks, uh, you'd get multiples of hours easy off a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. Can this lead time 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery run a full size household vacuum cleaner? Let's find out. Hundred and twenty nine amps, fifteen hundred watts. And there we go, it uh, shut down. The overcurrent protection, once again, is showing its strengths here. Protecting itself, it will not power a vacuum, at least uh, of this caliber. All right, everyone's favorite test can this lead time 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery in conjunction with this. 3000 watt energy inverter, run, a batch of wash. We've got uh, a load here in the washer and uh, I got this flashlight here so you can see. We've got a load here in the dryer. Now of these two machines, the hardest one to run is the dryer and it's just the initial startup. It requires an incredible amount of surge to get uh, those clothes spinning. Once it's up to speed, it's good to go. The washer is a piece of cake and I'll show you that. So the weak link will definitely be the battery. The inverter can handle the surge that this uh, dryer needs. And I'm optimistic that the battery will be able to do it as well because it's a very short lived major surge and then it uh, immediately reduces. We've got the Victron Smart Shunt app here. Starting in three, two, one. Ooh, it struggled, but it did it. The shunt doesn't uh, react very fast, so we aren't able to capture exactly how much. But uh, at the moment, uh, we're pulling, uh, what, 800 watts, 900? And that's because there's a hot surface igniter. And now that that's done, look at that, it's to just tumble the clothes. It's only pulling 360 watts, 370 watts. Now I should insert here, this is a gas dryer. Uh, you can see both 120 volt plugs are here and uh, they're plugged into the extension cord that goes to the inverter. And if we look back here, you can see the outlet for a 240 volt dryer is not being used. You might be able to see a gas line back in there somewhere. Now you can also see that the outlets uh, are for the 120 volt is not being used uh, because we're plugged in over here. This, uh, this should be a piece of cake for it. Three, two, one. 
And just so you can see with both of them running for a minute there, we were in the high 400 watt uh, range. And we're in the high 300 watt range, so very light. We'll be back when this washer is on the spin mode, which will be the most power that it's drawing, and see what it's doing then. All right, we're on spin mode. And if you take a look here, we're just under 500 watts being drawn. So, piece of cake. And look, we're only down to 64%. So you could probably get two full batches of wash uh, out of one of these 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries. Well, we're all about real world testing here. I just uh, got this battery out of the freezer. You may be able to see uh, some of the frost uh, on it to here. As real as it gets, uh, we've got a nice frosty cold morning. You can see there's snow on the ground. We are really going to be testing out this self-heating capability. So not only has this battery sat in a freezer overnight, but uh, we are also going to be charging it with snow on the ground on this nice frosty morning. It is less than ideal conditions. We've got uh, a lot of high clouds, so not great solar. The uh, sun is at a very steep angle. You can see how long the shadow is on that battery. And the solar panels are just kind of thrown haphazardly here, but we'll see if we can get enough juice into this charge controller to get uh, these heaters going and uh, warm the battery up to a point that uh, it will accept charge. Let's see what happens. We've got two, four, 600 watts of solar. These two are connected in series. Those two are connected in series. Each of these panels actually has a VOC very similar to each other. And then I've got them connected in parallel. So we should get close to a, a pretty balanced uh, output. Those are feeding into this uh, battery uh, solar charge controller. See, I don't know if you can see, I got two green lights there. And then we're feeding through the Victron Smart Shunt. Put a screen recording up here, but this is the charge controller app. And the sun just came out a little harder. And uh, if you notice, it's restricting the flow into the battery into about the 140, 130 watt range, uh, holding it uh, pretty consistent at about 9.5 to 10 amps. There's no app for this battery, so we can't see if there's actually current going into the battery uh, or not itself. But I assume that uh, the fact that it's metering itself to the 9 to 10 amp range that uh, it's just running the heaters in that battery. Now this is going to say that uh, the battery is fully charged uh, just because uh, I disconnected it from power. So it always does that. So ignore that state of charge. What we want to see is the uh, current amperage. 9.5, 9.6, 139 watts, 140 watts. And that's holding fairly consistent. Also notice the voltage. The voltage is up to 14.5 volts. So that right there goes to show that the heaters are actually the things running. And then I don't know if you can see, but uh, the sun uh, has now kind of gone behind uh, a cloud uh, a little more. And, and you can see now we're dropping, now we're down to 100 watts, 140, now we're coming back. And notice the voltage, you see the voltage, how it spiked back up to 14 before it was like 12 something. That uh, goes to show that the battery is in fact running the heaters because a fully charged lithium iron phosphate battery does not hold voltage right at, you know, 14.5 volts and then continue to accept 140 watts of input, especially when it's depleted about halfway. I depleted this battery to about uh, 60 percent, as you saw in the video. I was running laundry and uh, all kinds of stuff, and uh, I did not charge it back up at all after that. So we can see these heaters are working exceptionally well. Notice the time, 10.28 in the top uh, left corner there of the screen recording. We're going to let this run uh, until 11, and then we are going to come back out and uh, check on it. And this is a great day because it is chilly outside. We're not going to get much help from the ambient uh, air temperature. 2,000 years later. 30 minutes later, and there's some big changes here. This is now the uh, Victron Smart Shunt. 
uh, you can see up in the top left hand corner that uh, it's exactly 11. Check it out. Now the voltage is at 13.6 volts with a current of 19 amps for a total of 267 watts. It is now officially charging the battery, not heating it up anymore. That is very impressive performance from that battery. This charge controller uh, that I'm using maxes out at about 20 amps uh, for 12 volt uh, charging. So we are officially maxing out uh, what it can supply to uh, the battery, which is awesome. Does this self-heating function work? Absolutely and uh, works exceptionally well. If you want just kind of a bare bones, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery with low temperature charging protection and heated capability, uh, this is the way to go for sure. And even though it wouldn't run all the things I threw at it, I was impressed by its overcurrent protection. That's very good to see. I'd rather err on the side of too safe than not safe enough. I always say the smartest people are in my comments section and uh, I love hearing from you. I read all of your comments and I try to respond to as many of them as I possibly can. So let me know your thoughts. Also down in the description, I'll have a link to this battery as well as a coupon code to save you guys some money if you wanna pick one up. Let's also look and see how it compares against the competition. This spreadsheet will be linked uh, down in the description as well so you can uh, take a look in depth at it. This is where all of the batteries that I've ever tested are uh, recorded and rated. Just note that uh, due to how uh, superior the overcurrent protection is on this battery, it uh, was not able to run uh, all the tests and so it skews the numbers just slightly. But uh, I've noted that in the notes section and uh, also noted that uh, it's got self-heating, which is uh, a big plus, especially uh, if you live uh, where I do where it's cold. I sure appreciate you guys uh, sharing your time with us. Please consider liking and subscribing so you don't miss uh, future videos coming out soon. And we'll catch you all next time.